Let's talk about passing inputs into different viewports. All right, so for the first instance, instance that I'm gonna show you here, uh, I'm using a canvas layer and a texture rect here. So the canvas layer is just, of course, displaying this over my screen. Uh, why has this move? Transform, position, stop that. <laughs> and this texture rect is just using a, for a texture, it is using a viewport texture and I'm just passing in uh, one of my viewports. In this case, I'm passing in sub viewport uh, one right here and if you don't know how to set these kind of things up you can check out the video on doing mirrors and monitors and that's all you need to know uh, in order to get both of these up and running uh, the difference is, is if you're projecting onto a texture rack like this you don't need to go through the uh, setting to local thing that you have to do with a 3d object but with this uh, with that just set up, we just have two buttons, and those buttons are connected uh, here, or at least one button. And all I'm doing is, whenever I press that top button, I'm going to increase my count variable by one, and that's going to update the label, so you can visually see the number go up. And not only that, um, when we're passing input through, Right. When that button gets GUI input of some sort, we're going to, I'm going to post this image into my uh, output console down here. And if you didn't know how to do that, that's how you do it. You can do use print rich and then you can use any kind of BB code. In my case, I'm just using the image tag and passing in an image um, just to make the output a little more interesting. All right. So when I run this and my main script just has it set so I can hit spacebar or sorry spacebar or enter because i'm just using the ui uh except so when it's gone in the top left corner then i'm not passing any input and when it's there i am going to pass input so whenever i click on the button up here we're going to be we'll see that appear down here at the bottom and same with uh this little texture button here which is the good old icon uh we're just going to print out gui to show that we are getting separate input for that uh, button or well, that texture rect as opposed to uh, my button up top and then the button in the middle does absolutely nothing and you'll see that doing nothing but how do we pass input in well here are my main uh, you can ignore uh, the pos one and two that's just I'm just using that for moving it in and out of frame so you can ignore that this is just getting that texture rect that has the viewport put on it and these are my two viewports that I'll be using uh, as examples for you today. And I'm using a Boolean to determine whether or not I can push input. So when I am using tablet, I'll push input. And when I'm not, I won't. And the way this is set up is inside of my input event. It's as simple. If using tablet and I hit my UI accept, I'll adjust the position. I'll change my Boolean. Else, I'm not using my tablet. Um, I'll go ahead and if I'm hitting the UI accept button again, I'll use uh, the POS2 to move it and change my Boolean here. So this allows me to change it on and off, whether I'm using it or not. And all we need to do now is actually pass the input in. And this is actually extremely simple. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get that first viewport. Remember, that's this one here sub viewport is all it's called it doesn't have anything else with it right i'm just going to grab that so sub viewport oh not that one sub underscore viewport and all i'm going to do is i'm going to call a method on it called push input and i'm going to pass my event in <clears throat> now if you only want to pass certain types of events of course you can be like if event is uh, input mouse input event mouse button right and then just tap that in then only your mouse clicks will be passed in as an example uh, but I'm gonna pass in everything so of course I need that the position and the clicks in this case so I could say if event is mouse button 
Rusty Vent Run or Event is Mouse Motion, and that would work. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and run it. And again, I'll hit my UI accept. Right, so we're off. We're, there's no input. No matter what happens where I click, nothing happens. I'm going to hit UI accept again. And it's on. And as I move my mouse over, we should see the buttons being hovered over. Because we're now taking input into there. Which should be taking into account my mouse's position as well as my clicks. And I move in. And there we go. It's highlighted so we can see the... Uh, middle button here does nothing and the text direct down here for the GUI input will print out GUI when I mouse down and mouse up because those are two different inputs. Middle does nothing and our top one will post our image of Stitch yelling about Lilo touching him. You're touching me! <laughs> middle does nothing and again print GUI. Alright, so that's all we have to do when it comes to this UI and you could put this on a 3D object. Uh, if you want to do UI like that, for example, a uh, a computer or tablet like you would get with like PC building simulator or all these simulators that are coming out recently, um, you would just need to convert coordinates um, from 2D to 3D and the 3D back to 2D. It's a little more of a headache because you have to do a bunch of conversions uh, for your 3D object into 2D space. But you can do it effectively the exact same way, just pushing the, the input through. But now, what about this in the middle? I have this mesh, and it's got its own viewport put in here. Now, the reason why I have this set up separately is because the UI is not very interesting, right? You might use it, you might not. Uh, it's nice to know, but what about something that might be a little more practical that we might have seen in games already? Well, this is where arcade cabinets come in, right? Have you ever played a game and uh, maybe interacted? <clears throat> Sorry about the voice. Still not fully recovered. Um, but <clears throat> uh, have you ever played a game and then maybe interact with a game console in front of a TV and then you get to play this little mini game, such as with Saints Row 2. Uh, I don't think the first one, but just the second one. Um, there's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Back at the Johnson house, there was a mini game you could play there, um, as well as oh, I can't think of the name. It was it was a two-player game, uh, A Way Out, I think that was it, um, and that actually had uh, arcade cabinets in it. A couple of those that you could interact with, and there's other games that had these arcade cabinets that you can interact with, and you basically interact with it, and then your input would get passed into the arcade cabinet and you can play this little arcade game. That's what we just learned. We can apply that here. So what I have here is our 3D object, right? Right here. This is just a plane and it's got a viewport texture assigned into its material. So if you come into your mesh, add a material, come down to the albedo texture, you can set it as a viewport texture, come in, and I've selected viewport two, in my case. And that just has, if I open that up, that just has a character body and a camera, so I can move it around, just so you can see it. Oh, bad. <laughs> um, that should sort itself out uh, in a moment anyway. Uh, but as we go ahead and run it, hopefully it sorts itself out, otherwise I'll uh, have to pause and take a look here. A sec. Ah, I see what I did when I clicked on that. I removed the viewport texture, so I just click on that again. Hit sub viewport two. There we go. Just reapply that. Um, and if you are getting that pink no texture look again, you can go back and look at the mirrors and monitors video, and you can see the solutions for uh, that as we went over that issue. But with this, um, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm just going to grab my sub viewport two. Remember that's grabbing my second sub viewport node there and I'm just going to do the same thing just push input and I'll come in I'll hit my UI accept well actually wait I'll wait we don't have it up there in the corner so we know it's not uh it's not taking any input and I hit my buttons and absolutely nothing is happening nothing's moving I'm going to hit my UI accept so now I should be passing my input through and there you go 
I can now play around with my character here. Now, it is important to know you don't want to do this on, put your input on process, physics process, um, because remember, we want to pass input through to it. And for that, we have to pass in our event. So on the character, what I've done is actually have this inside of the input, which uh, is, in my opinion is probably where that should go anyway. But there it is, right? We just put in input, we pass in the event, and I'm just saying if it, if the event is an input event key, if the event is being pressed, and then in my case, I'm just checking if it's my uh, left arrow or right arrow or neither of them here. And my physics process is just handling my move and slide while the input is changing my velocity for that. But that's it. I could come in here now and create a game for this little arcade cabinet and it'll work perfectly fine just like you would expect in uh, any other game so there you go that's how we can pass input in to a sub viewport either for uh, some kind of ui reasons like we have at the top left or maybe to make uh, interactable objects or mini games uh, within your game like you see here in the middle where we're projecting viewports onto uh, 3d objects all right, and that'll do it for this. Fairly simple. Uh, just got to remember the one line. Get your viewport, sub viewport, push input, and pass your event in. All right, so that'll do it here. Take care. Have, have a good one. <clears throat> and I'll see you guys in the next one.